So here you are going to watch suspension bridge pharyngoplasty in a 33 year old male with history of snoring choking. His body mass index is only 23 and his apnea hypopnea index is 33 which is majorly obstructive apneas. So on the drug induced sleep endoscopy he has got majorly a lateral collapse and you can see the tonsils are pretty large. They were not seeming so large here but as you see when I pull them the tonsil is actually pretty endophytic. So this is the first thing that you may not see the tonsil to be large till you really pull them out and you figure out that's the lateral border of the tonsil here. So you do not take your incision there, you take your incision here at the lateral border of the tonsil. So I am first performing tonsillectomy and adult tonsillectomy with cobulation at the setting of 7 and 3, 7 for ablation and 3 for coagulation and you can see that this part of the musculature of the anterior pillar, a very small bit of the musculature is also sacrificed because otherwise you do not get into the correct plane and if you do not get into the correct plane your job does not become proper from the time you start. So if you get into the correct plane you can see I have not exposed the muscles of the tonsillar fossa at all so far. But you can see the tonsil here very very clearly and here that's the we are going near the uvula I'll try to protect the uvula as much as possible but in the end anyway I need to remove the uvula with the consent of this patient for taking care of the snoring part so really that does not matter too much can you see that there is no blood vessel, there is no muscular uh, musculature which is uh, so far exposed. Now I will pull this tonsil completely medially. And get into the perfect plane between the tonsil and the uvula. So since this is not an infected tonsil, so you can see the planes very very well. This is only a large tonsil. So larger the tonsil, better the results. Because you can create that much more space. Wherever you see small vessel, you simply coagulate them so that they do not open at a later stage. Now I have opened the tonsil like a book and I will try to get into the correct plane, remain into the correct plane rather. We will maintain the pull on the tonsil and that is the whole upper part of the tonsil already dissected. Now as I reach the as I reach the lower pole, I expect the tonsillar artery anywhere here. So this is a case of obstructive sleep apnea and the patient is from outstation, he is supposed to go back to his hometown after 3 to 4 days. So I will go intracapsular over here, I will not expose the tonsillar artery. Because we know that the tonsillar artery, the lower part of the tonsil does not contribute to obstructive sleep apnea. So I am going intracapsular. You can see the dissection which is not outside the tonsil but just inside the tonsillar tissue. So I will not leave a lot of tonsil tissue behind because that will lead to a uh, foreign body sensation later. 
but at the same time i have not exposed the tonsillar artery and i am coagulating that area and that's the dissection of the tonsil now that's the lingual tonsil i need not remove that so that's the tonsillectomy part over now let us see how much of the soft palate is actually extra which is causing obstructive sleep apnea so this is not a very very long soft palate but as we put our finger here that's the hard palate soft palate junction and when we push our finger behind that's the length of the soft palate which is required to maintain the velopharyngeal sufficiency so you see this is the line joining anterior pillar to anterior pillar the anterior pillar is actually here it was not here it is here so now this is the length which is required so if i remove the length of the soft palate from anterior pillar to anterior pillar that will not cause any kind of velopharyngeal insufficiency therefore with the consent of the patient we are removing the uvula of this patient but at the level of the anterior pillar to anterior pillar so and we will keep an eye on what are the muscles which i am dividing so you can see this muscle being divided and this is a vertical muscle these are the muscles of the posterior pillar so i am at the lower end of the horizontal part horizontal part is the levator palati so i am not cutting through them i am cutting through majorly the vertical muscles the vertical muscle on the side is posterior pillar or the palato pharyngeus and the muscle in the center you can see is the muscular uvula you can you see i am dividing the muscular uvula muscle now this is the palato pharyngeus on the left side that's the muscular uvula this is the palato pharyngeus on the right side which i am dividing all the oblique fibers of the palato pharyngeus i have divided this these are the vertical fibers which i am not really going to divide i am just going to rotate them now this is the dissection of the muscular uvula and i will protect all the mucosa on the pharyngeal aspect So that will reduce the foreign body sensation to a great extent. So we can achieve resection of the uvula without too much of foreign body sensation. And since I am using ablation, so the fibrosis is going to be minimal, and I am protecting the mucosa almost completely till here. Now the musculature so i will divide the uvula at this point you can see i have protected all the mucosa now a few fibers are still remaining i am just going to divide them these oblique fibers are being divided and now i'll take a very sharp cut onto this mucosa so let me see then if there is any small bleeding point i'll cauterize that 
Now we know that a vessel enters the posterior pillar here. So I am not dividing the posterior pillar at the lower part. I divide the posterior pillar, this mucosa, very very sharply at the upper end. So this is the area which is the bottleneck. So I will divide this bottleneck area very very sharply over here. So that we do not damage any mucosa. And we will rotate this laterally and close it here. So we will transpose the posterior pillar of the tonsil laterally. We can use a absorbable barb suture or we can use vicryl. So here I am going to use vicryl. But you can always use a absorbable barb suture over here. So that will take care of the lateral collapse completely. So while using the barb su uh, while using the vicryl or barb suture for the lateral part. So I will use the pterygo mandibular raffae as the reference point. So the pterygo mandibular raffae is between the mandible and the maxilla here. So I will go start from lateral to the pterygo mandibular raffae. And if you are using a vicryl then you must make sure that it is a round body vicryl 2O round body vicryl. I am starting from lateral to the pterygo mandibular raffae coming through the anterior pillar. If you try to go into the uh, tonsillar fossa then you will hit some vessel that I have learnt over a period of time and therefore I come through the anterior pillar because anyway we want to pull the posterior pillar anterolaterally. So you can see that so far there is no bleeding. Now I will take the whole bulk of the palatopharyngeus into this vicryl suture. I will take the whole bulk of the palatopharyngeus. So I have gone out into the mucosa here. And while coming back, if you can see, I try to close this mucosal wound and this will pull it towards the lateral side. Maybe I will just take one more complete bulk of palatopharyngeus it has to be a deeper bite otherwise it will not hold. No, no, no. So see I need it to hold laterally. I am taking one more bite into the whole palatopharyngeus. I think I have hit a small vessel not a problem. So now this will hold the entire thing and then I have to come from the mucosal side so that it will keep the whole mucosa closed. So the healing time will be that much lesser if I come from the mucosa side. So when you are going blindly definitely you are bound to and we come out of this and the last thing we will do is to 
get to the pterygomandular apex. So I have taken two, three. See, our aim is to keep it laterally. Okay, and I will gently pull it laterally to the pterygomandular raphe. So I'll again come from the anterior pillar. which is little less vascular and here I am remaining medial to the pterygomandular raphe. So if I remain medial to the pterygomandular raphe here, we make use of the whole strength of the pterygomandular raphe. So this has to remain out. So if you use a barbed suture, then obviously you save a lot of uh, time because you will not have to take the knot after this. Here I am going to take a knot, but the net result is going to be similar. Now can you see that it is going to just remain pulled laterally. So let me check for hemostasis, there is no active blood bleeding. And now I will tie it very, very gently you see there should not be too much of tension into this suture because then it will not stay. It is only to hold it laterally till it heals. Can you see this? So for this you cannot use a non-absorbable barb suture, you have to use an absorbable barb suture. Okay. So more than this you cannot apply any tension. So that is the third knot. I cannot apply any more tension on this and will keep it longer. Scissor piece. We'll keep it longer so that it does not open up. Fine. Now I'll take the non-absorbable barb suture for the suspension bridge. Can you give me the barb piece? So as you saw, we have taken care of the lateral collapse, but for the AP collapse. We will be using a non absorbable V lock 30 barbed suture. So, for this, we will again start from lateral to the pterygomandular raphe. That is the pterygomandular raphe. So, we will start lateral to it so that we can pull the knot into the tissues and we come near to the free border of the soft palate here. This suspension bridge will take care of the lateral collapse. So are you able to see this knob, loop sorry. Now I am pulling this loop completely inside, okay. Now no part of the loop is visible, it is completely buried. So there is no chance of an extrusion and then we go pretty deep onto the soft palate. Entering from the same point where we exited, very very deep so that we reach the other side, we cross the midline over here and reach the other side. Now can you see this, this pull will be anterior, this suture will not let the soft palate fall posteriorly and this one will not let it fall laterally. So this is being taken care of in both AP and lateral. Now I'll, this is part 1, now I will come to the other side, I will perform the tonsillectomy and then come back to you, thank you.